two days before the launch, the Air Force was still testing and putting the final touches on this, a modified 37-foot-long Minuteman missile. It would simulate an enemy attack, the first time U.S. radar would be tested against an incoming threat. It'll track that missile, and then it will send a cue on its, based on its track file to an aircraft that's flying uh, downrange from the missile, which will act as a surrogate interceptor. That surrogate interceptor plane will pretend to shoot down the missile. This would be the first launch from the Kodiak Space Launch Complex, which is still under construction. The Air Force is using temporary facilities as they stay with their testing schedule. This structure housing the missile, called a clamshell, is temporary. Three days before the launch, they have what they call a dress rehearsal. We had a couple minor problems in communications, which were sorted out. We continued on with the count, got all the way through T0 and into the plus count, and things look very good for launch. Okay. This is the launch control center crammed into a small trailer. Two days before the $12 million launch, this meeting designed to smooth out any communications problems. What we should do is say, uh, make that all medical personnel on station. The missile will also carry five experiments. The Air Force is moving away from using conventional radar systems to track its own missiles. Most of the experiments involve using Global Positioning Systems, or GPS, to track the missile after its launch. The idea here is to see what's the most optimal antenna configuration that can be used, and once we figure that out, we can, uh, we can have those designs laid into the other launch vehicles currently in the inventory and hopefully save several millions of dollars in development and design costs. Safety, this is LD. I copied that the Uriah FTS check on board is complete. After a day off, launch day. Technicians are making some last minute checks. Well, they'll initialize the guidance system, uh, arm flight termination system, check it out, uh, arm all the ordnance on board the vehicle, do a lot of uh, checking with the range, making sure everybody that's deployed out here to watch will be available. More than 100 officials and other visitors are on hand to watch the launch. They can also follow the flight with the help of this computer projected screen on the ceiling of a tent. The Air Force Base Command out of Colorado will monitor every minute of the missile's 16 minute flight. This program here is an outgrowth of the uh, Air Force Space Command's uh, 10 cap program, Talon Shield, uh, developed during uh, the Gulf War. And uh, that unit, as you might recall, uh, provided SCUD warnings to uh, Central Command. Uh, from uh, launches in Iraq. Uh, this is an outgrowth of the program in which we've uh, matured the technology and the sensor inputs and the fusion capability to a higher degree to provide a more precise uh, impact point and launch location. The weather had been perfect all day, but during the afternoon clouds begin rolling in. The Air Force needs a cloud ceiling of 10,000 feet to launch the missile. They send up a weather balloon to test conditions. They decide they can go ahead with the launch at the scheduled time, 4.32 p.m. Three, two, one, and we have liftoff. Kodiak residents also gather to watch the historic launch. Their vantage point, Pillar Mountain near Kodiak City, about 40 miles from the launch site. The missile disappears into the clouds after about 45 seconds. The Air Force says it performed flawlessly with the payload splashing down about 300 miles west of Seattle. It was a good flight. We had a good booster launch. Uh, looks like our, all our sensors got all their data. All our platforms picked up data. Some of them are radars. We thought they'd lose track a little early, and they kept track a lot longer than expected. The first successful launch is a relief for the Alaska Aerospace Development Corporation. We're still under construction, you know, so to have a launch go off successfully in uh, temporary facilities, and it's just, it's just unbelievable, you know, it's just a great day for Alaska. Lieutenant Colonel Kelsey says it looks like the onboard experiments went well, but they will not know for sure until a couple of months. 
after scientists have a chance to analyze the data. The Air Force plans another launch next August. Releasing several objects, basically balloons. We have a different, uh, what's a, uh, like a simulated uh, reentry vehicle that may simulate a scud, thing, thing of that nature, and see how well the radars can look at several objects versus one. Until then, work continues on the Kodiak launch complex. Up to. In Kodiak, Kirk Chason, Inside Alaska.